Hi, I'm Ian Cole, the Technical Director of the Indoor Air Quality Association, bringing you an IEQA tech tip on measuring carbon monoxide. If you're performing an indoor air quality assessment, it's highly recommended to measure carbon monoxide with a device using an electrochemical sensor. Is it sufficient to just take down some readings as you're walking around the space? Consider a gas-fired hot water heater that's improperly vented. Whenever it kicks on, it causes carbon monoxide to spill into the space. But what if the hot water heater is not actively firing when you're measuring carbon monoxide? You may get low readings and miss a serious IAQ issue. Point number one is that you need to turn on gas appliances and equipment during the assessment. This may even mean running a furnace in a home during the summertime, or even starting a car in the attached garage. It's possible to have relatively low readings, even when combustion appliances are on, yet still have a carbon monoxide problem. To find these not so obvious problems, make sure all windows are closed and all exhaust fans are turned on. For a true worst case scenario, you should activate anything that contributes to negative pressure. For example, that would include running a clothes dryer in a home. With all the exhaust fans on, you may cause air to be sucked down the combustion venting, preventing the carbon monoxide and other combustion gases from escaping. This is called backdrafting. Point number two is that you should create a worst case scenario of negative pressure to see if the building is at risk for backdrafting. So as you can see, measuring carbon monoxide is more than just reading some numbers off a device as you walk around a building. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, consider taking a one-hour class in the IAQA University titled Measuring Carbon Monoxide. Visit the IAQA website for more information.